back to my channel i know it's been a while but trust me when i tell you it's for a good reason okay i've been going through a self-development process a journey a self-healing journey and i want to tell you all about it so make sure you go hit that subscribe button okay and stay tuned we're gonna get into it right now all right it's been a while i miss you guys i miss you i miss you i miss you so much you have no idea how much i miss you guys and i am not holding out on you i promise i'm gonna be more and more consistent um i just really needed some time to myself you know what i mean i just needed some time to reflect to heal to get some things situated to get closer to god to really absorb my new environment and the stuff that i've been working on i have good news for you guys i have a lot in store so as i do my makeup with you get ready with you and all that good stuff i'm gonna be spilling the tea okay because i know you guys miss me <laughs> all right where do i start where do i start so of course in life every woman goes through the phase of survival mode right and i realized that I was always in a repetitive cycle of survival mode and it was driving me crazy. I felt like I was suffocating. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I mean, that's that says that's the same thing as suffocating, but no, it was like totally different. Like I would wake up every day on repeat as if I was a robot. And what I mean by I can't breathe is I felt like I was just like screaming, like like I was screaming and nobody could hear me. Like I was in a box and nobody could hear me, but st still I was managing to function on a day to day. Like when I realized that, it was the most scariest thing in the world and it felt like life was just passing me by and it felt like I got so stuck in the mode of just doing what is expected of me and not truly being in tune with myself and in control of my own life and control of my day to day. I mean, let's be honest here. I only have one life to live, one. And as the days go by, I get older and older. I change more and more as a woman and I felt completely lost to that. I felt like I was so used to being that brokenhearted girl that I was no longer the brokenhearted girl because I absorbed my healing journey and I like felt like, well, who am I now? Like I felt like I was so lost to who I was, who I was becoming and my desires for my life. So I started to say, oh no, like, I need to do something and I need to do something fast I don't know if any of you ever been through that before where you realize that you really need to get your life back on track as far as stop putting everything and and everyone before you your wants and needs and now making yourself a priority and the stigma is when you're a single mom it's no longer about you and I just think that's a whole bunch of BS like you can't convince me that because I chose to be a mom that I no longer exist that is foolishness it is foolishness at its best and so I've just been trying to figure out, okay, how do I redesign my life to the point where 
I can still function and I can still feel like a human being and I can still feel like I matter. So in order to do that, I've been reading a lot of books, a lot of books, and these books have definitely changed my mindset. They have changed the way I feel about life, my perspective. Um, I could definitely be honest and tell you that I used to feel stuck, you know, that stuck mentality, like, you know, first daughter syndrome, nobody's coming to save me. And it would make me panic. It would make me panic so bad to the point where like I had really bad anxiety just knowing that I felt this way and I really believed that my life was hopeless because of what society says and because of what everybody around me said and concluded my life to be just because I was struggling to keep up with being that single mom and being myself. And so when you're in a stuck mindset, you definitely start to follow through and act and behave in ways as if you are trapped. And so I had to break a lot of habits, guys. When I tell you I had a lot of habits that kept me feeling stagnant in life, and this self-development journey really has opened my eyes it really has helped me get out of that feeling get out of that phase of feeling stuck it's the most toxic phase of life to feel so stuck and apprehensive towards yourself not to mention when you have two kids that are looking forward to life through you each and every day. So I started to meditate more. Meditation really has changed my perspective on the importance of having emotional intelligence as a woman and as a single mom because when you're a single mom and you're dating you know you tend to get clingy you tend to seek validation and reassurance through these men who really at the end of the day don't give a damn okay they could care less about you you're just another one on their roster you're just a piece of meat in their eyes especially in today's society and they keep it moving, right? So, you know, instead of getting caught up in that whole emotional wreck, depression of, oh, I'm a single mom and nobody wants me and everybody was right. No man is ever going to want me and I'm never going to get married again and I'm never going to find my husband. I'm never going to have my happily ever after. Like, you know, instead of getting caught up in all that negative thinking, all that toxicity, Meditation really helped me control that. It centers your mind and it helps you understand that you got to just breathe through everything. Breathe. Take a chill pill. Relax. When you say that you believe in God and you have faith, you have to let the universe, you have to let God, you have to let your guardian angels work for you. So situations may seem a way right then and there, but he's actually working it out for you behind the scenes. And when you take up negative thoughts, you're manifesting it into your life, into your day to day. So it's better to just relax, let it go, let it work itself out. Guys, when I tell you, ever since I decided to adapt that type of mentality, through meditation and practice meditation more often it's been a breathtaking experience it's been an experience where i feel so elevated and powerful
powerful. Honestly, nothing gets to me anymore. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm bitter and I wouldn't say that I'm cold. I would say that I am aware of how to control my emotions to the point where I know what to let intercede and break me down. I know what to avoid and what to ignore. And trust me, um, the stuff that used to get to me once before <laughs> can't get to me now. Like, it's very hard for me to break down and get into my emotions. And that's why I absolutely adore the whole meditation thing because it opens up your third eye it opens up your seven chakras excuse me it helps you control them and when i was in nursing school that is actually something that we learned about learning how to understand the seven chakras because they are actually the access to life um when people are dying their seven chakras start to shut down and you have to study that in nursing school. And it says a lot. It teaches you about the five general senses that a person needs or the body needs to function on a day-to-day -day basis. And so when you learn to meditate and control your seven chakras, oh, it's a whole different experience, okay? It's like, it's not even like adapting to this, ugh, I don't give a damn attitude it's not even that it's just a simple fact of understanding that if it's not affecting your money let it slide if it's not hurting your kids let it slide in which you as a grown adult you shouldn't be putting yourself in predicaments that is going to allow or, or manifest into significant ways to affect your money or your kids anyway because those are the two things that you protect as a grown as adult right it's just natural you ain't gonna let nobody come for your money and come for your livelihood and come for the very reason why you exist your kids your babies oh no oh no so metaphor manifesting abundance and learning meditation goes hand in hand and it definitely taught me how to stay productive how to make money in new ways and be abundant in every aspect of my life i just love it guys i love it i also understand it's not what people say is how you react and definitely is not what people do is how you react and when i tell you once i understood that people treat you how they feel about you okay so you never have to second guess how somebody feels about you in order for you to get your act together just sit back and watch and not only that not only do people treat you how they feel about you okay you have to know how to allow people to respect your presence and appreciate your presence because you don't have to show up for nobody but the ones that you care for okay and once you understand that especially when it comes to like networking or going to work a job that you hate dealing with jealous co-workers or dealing with some guy that you're dating and trying to get you know in a relationship with you have to let people understand that your presence is not to be taken for granted and meditation will definitely teach you how to hold your own okay it will teach you that getting upset and reacting is a no because let's be real here okay you could always put somebody in their place right you could always tell somebody a piece of your mind right but sometimes you manifest chaos 
and destruction into your life when you decide to just go off on somebody or you decide to throw a fit because they're not appeasing to you they're not doing the things that you want them to do they're not treating you how you would want them to treat you so you decide that you're gonna up and cuss them out for it baby you are reaping karma for that later on in your life for somebody that you're probably not even gonna remember in a few years and you don't know when karma's gonna hit let's be honest you just don't know so in order to be emotional emotionally intelligent to the point where you control your reactions and you control who gets to make you cry and who gets to irritate you and who gets to get underneath your skin it will move mountains for you it will definitely help you create a necessary boundary in any type of situation that you're in whether it be romantically professionally just in general okay people will respect your presence they will listen when you open your mouth because you display a certain kind of dignity and a certain kind of um, behavior that is immaculate and it will always want them to it will always allow them excuse me to want to keep you around or remember you for it and let me tell you something one thing I've learned in this life okay people will always remember you for how you treated them they will remember you for nothing else and you may not like a person right that moment for how they're treating you and you may lose respect for them at that moment and that's completely fine it happens every day but to voice that and you don't know what that person is going through or to act up on them and you don't know what is behind the lines you don't know what kind of lifestyle they live or what's what they're going through at the moment that makes them act so toxic and chaotic towards you you don't know nothing you're just assuming that they don't like you you're just assuming that they're jealous you're just assuming that they don't appreciate you you're just assuming that they don't care about you and maybe it's just right at that specific time that specific moment they can't see your worth because they don't even know their own. And who are you to point that out? You're nobody to point that out because even us ourselves don't recognize our own worth. When we put ourselves in certain situations, when we put ourselves in, in certain bonds that become detrimental to us, mind, body, and soul. And everything we do on a day to day is a conscious decision. You can't tell me that as a grown woman or a grown person, you don't think about nothing before you do it. So meditation has definitely taught me that anything you do on your day to day is because deep down you wanted to do it. You thought about it with your conscious mind and it was a conscious decision and you're gonna have to follow through with every decision that you make every decision that you make you never know who is who you never know if god sent certain people into your life at a specific time to test you for your blessings or to offer you an opportunity or to teach you a lesson like you never know what is what and who is who so always practice emotional intelligence because you never know okay that is a big 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 lesson that i have learned through meditation and this whole self-development journey that i've been on and guys if you learned anything from my past i want you to learn from my future too okay we're gonna stick this out together my day ones and my new friends Thank you for coming by. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be an open book. My life is going to be a testimony for a lot of women that have gone through the type of stuff that I have gone through.
and I mean that. I truly believe what's meant to be will be. At first, I used to be so caught up in trying to control every aspect of my day-to-day. -day. Now, I believe in just letting things flow naturally. What is to be will always be. Nothing can change that, no matter how much you try to have a tight grip on everything that plays out in your life, decisions, certain relationships. You can't control every single last detail. You just can't. And the, when, the minute you realize that as a grown woman, you will actually help yourself release a lot of stress and anxiety, a lot of depression, a lot of feeling like you're a failure. Because you're really not a failure. You're not. It's just because you're trying to control everything. Because life and society has taught us black women that if we don't always pull through, get it together, stay strong, stay independent, that we are not in control of our lives and that we are a failure. And that's far from the truth. Far from the truth. So this self-development journey has definitely allowed me to embrace sitting back and letting things play out, releasing the stronghold of, I gotta do this tomorrow, I gotta do this, I gotta do that by next week, I gotta do this by next year, I gotta get married by 30, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I don't know. No, I don't. I don't have do nothing i just have to wake up every day thank god for life pray my root and pray my way through the day and whatever happens was supposed to happen that day and whatever whatever happens tomorrow was supposed to happen tomorrow that's it enjoy the little moments guys let me tell you something enjoy the small moments they really make a difference Remember, I told you in the beginning, I used to feel like life was passing me by. Now, I could sit back. Ever since I let go of control, I could sit back and reflect on small moments that happened throughout my day-to-day -day and really appreciate them. Really just, like, enjoy them. Look back and giggle to myself. I never used to do that. I never used to just sit back and say, oh, I remember yesterday my son did this. It was so funny. Like, I could never, I used to never be able to do that, guys. And that's what used to really bother me. Like, I only had flashbacks of horrific things that I went through way back when. I never had happy moments flashbacks. I never had flashbacks that brought peace to my soul and joy to my heart. And when you truly go through your self-development journey, you're going to learn and absorb that life is short. So don't dwell on the negative things. Don't dwell on, oh, this person made me feel some type of way. Don't dwell on none of that. Don't dwell on, oh, I went through this, I went through that. Um, society sees me as this broken black woman. Society sees me as toxic. Society no just let it all go let it all go and in the midst of letting it go redefine yourself because that's exactly what i'm doing and it's working the key to your self-healing journey and your self-development journey is to take full responsibility your day-to-day -day is your responsibility. What happens to you in life is your fault because nothing can happen to you unless you allow it. People can't treat you a certain kind of way unless you allow it. So when you take full responsibility and understand on your healing journey that you have to hold yourself accountable for your feelings the way you move 
and things of that nature you'll quickly get out of this whole ordeal of feeling like a victim feeling like oh nothing works for me in life oh i can't do this and i can't do that yes you can yes you can because nobody can stop you from doing what you make your mind up to do just think about it unless people know your every move how can they stop you and even if they do try to stop you they could delay you right they could delay you but they can't stop you so I've learned to take more responsibility for my day-to-day -day and stop feeling like I'm a helpless stop feeling like I'm a victim believe in yourself more than anybody else ever will and you'll surely surely overcome everything and anything that comes your way stop stressing out who is for you will be for you what is for you will be yours you don't have to stress about nothing. You don't have to force nothing. You don't have to chase anything. You don't have to overthink nothing. Just let it flow. Because like I said before, when you really truly believe in God and trust God, you know that faith of a mustard seed will move mountains on your behalf. You know that everything for you will happen at the right time. Timing is everything. God's timing is everything and you have to truly absorb that and move like you believe in that okay and life will definitely turn up for you definitely turn up for you so thank you for watching guys make sure you stay tuned like comment subscribe I'll see you next time